only person that our government near feared. I placed, on my, I placed my hand on the coffin, he said, and holding the candle obliquely, I see a large gilt plate whereon her name and titles are engraved. As cremation was illegal at that time, the Leap Singh had to get permission from the Indian authorities, from the British Indian government. And a year later, he was allowed to proceed to India, but he was not allowed to go to the Punjab, so the Maharani was cremated on the banks of the Godavari in Bombay. But the story of Maharani Jindal and Kensal Green does not end there. Almost 150 years later, in 2007, Barry Smith, um, Barry, is, <laughs> Barry, Smith, Barry Smith emailed me with an Indian inscription which they had discovered beneath this very chapel, and he asked me to decipher it. Straight away, I had a hunch that this was connected to Maharani Jindal. Actually, the file he sent to me was actually called the Maharani of Kaur, and funny that the, the Maharani of Kaur was the very woman who Queen Victoria wished to create an alliance with, with the Leap Singh. But the Leap Singh refused the alliance and said she was more of a sister. Well, my father translated the old Gurumuk inscription. It confirmed my hunch. And days later, we were told of another two more pieces of inscription which completed the gravestone. This was Mahalani Jindal's gravestone, the marker which marked a stored coffin in this very catacomb beneath this chapel. In the spring of 1864, the gravestone was smashed and these slabs of Indian inscribed stone were thrown to one side of the pit. The coffin was taken out and taken to India for cremation. And amazingly, for almost 150 years, these pieces of stone remained under debris, earth and human remains. And we had these restored, and now they are exhibited at Fetford Museum. I was shown the catacombs at the time, and the place was littered with open caskets, smashed coffins ready for their lead, and bags of body parts which had been discovered from all over the place in the catacomb. I would be lying to say that I wasn't freaked out, but this was history. History which I've now written in my new book, Sovereign, Squire and Rebel, Maharaja Dalip Singh, and the years of a lost kingdom. My book, my, <coughs> my um, research on this book time took some 13 years, and it's taken me across many continents. And I'd like to take this opportunity <coughs> today to thank some of the people who assisted me. First, I'd like to thank my mother and father who are here today. I'd like to thank Ooh. my wife, Satnam. My wife is probably more happy to be published than I am. <laughs> she gets quite jealous of my so-called obsession with the deep scene. So, I'd like to thank a, a role model for all sick writers, Sadar Patwan Singh. Yes. A distinguished author and historian who kindly wrote the forward for my book and especially made the trip today to unveil this memorial plaque behind me. I'd like to thank Harbinder Singh Rana, who I first met in 1993 when we were doing the celebrations for the Leap Singh Centenary. And through Harbinder's hard work, I saw him unveil an equestrian statue at Fetford and a memorial plaque at Elberlin Church. I'd like to thank Oliver Bone, the curator of the museum, of Fetford Museum, and who's made a special trip from Norfolk today, so thank you. Also, Christy Campbell, who couldn't be here today, but I had the pleasure to work with Christy Campbell on research when he was working on the Maharaja's box in 1997. I'd like to thank Jorga Singh, who's at the back there with his, with his wife, I think. And Jorga made a trip from Coventry. And I'd like to thank Jorga for his design and reprographics work. Jorga got the book to look exactly how I wanted it to. Um, and I don't think he knew what he was getting himself into when he uh, agreed to take on this project. But he did a tremendous job, so I'm very thankful to him. Locally, I'd like to thank the Museum of London, the Royal Collection at Windsor, the National Archives at Kew, the British Library and the V&A. Before I pass you on to Harbinda Singh Rana, we'll say a few words on behalf of the Anglo Sikh Heritage Trail. I'd like to thank Barry Smith and everyone at the Friends of Kensal Green Cemetery for their tremendous work for making this event possible today and making it a most, a most memorable one as well. Thank you very much.